Yeah. <laughs> I was just told to give the Lord another praise. So come on, let's give the Lord another praise. Let this talk over to As our focus goes to the time that Jesus was to go to the cross, before he went to the cross, he sat with the disciples for that last supper, Passover supper. He shared with them, and you remember the lesson it talks about. He said, one of you will betray me. The scripture says, the word came back, Lord, is it I? Do we know what betrayal is? Betrayal is sin. And I don't want to have to ask, have I sinned? Yes, I have. Somewhere along the way. But this is where we come now and ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me. And you know the word of God says when we do that, come to him. He forgives us. Oh, I know. It was the blood of me. Ah, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again to me. Oh, one day, Jesus died. Yes, I know. It was the blood of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Amen. Right now, we do want to welcome our first-time visitors to our sanctuary. If you're visiting for the first time, would you just wave your hand so that we can see you? I want to give you a shout-out. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And there may be some visiting online as well. We want to say to you, welcome to the Faith Diamond Experience. Woohoo! Glory to God. And we promise a word for you today. Amen? Amen. I just have one announcement that I need to give, and that is to remind you that um, on Friday, Friday, which is known as Good Friday, we will be vis uh, viewing the Passion of the Christ right here in the sanctuary. So please, please be present at 7 o'clock. We want to start rolling. Um, and we do want you to be able to um, uh, witness this wonderful movie with us. Amen? Just gives a, gives a lot of insight as to what happened on that day, um, on that, that whole season. We're, we're in, that, in that season right now. This is traditionally known as Palm Sunday, right? And so we know what happened on Palm Sunday, and we know that a week later, we know how they turned on our Savior. We want to be able to witness the whole story. So please, please, please be here on Friday at 7 o'clock um, to share with us in the, in the movie. And there are a couple of other announcements. Um, let's see. Valencia and Minister Kabler. Okay, I don't know who wants to go first. I'll take a number. Good morning, church family. I trust that all is well. I know everybody's blessed and highly favored. Amen, amen. So I stand before you today and to recognize there's a special celebration coming, coming forth. And the celebration, now, so I have no Deuteronomy Young, because you know, when I'm over the flag, it's going on as well. So make sure you get all the information that you need. But I'm here to, to, to let you know that it's time for a celebration, and the celebration is our bishop and co-pastor, 34th anniversary. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. So it's time to celebrate. So, you know, Bishop and co-pastors, um, I have notes, but you know, I don't use notes. Bishop and co-pastors are our leaders. They, um, they, they teach us the word of God day by day. They teach us how to walk by faith and not by sight. They teach us the word of God, like I said already. They teach us um, on how to get in the presence of the Holy Spirit, 
how what you say is what you get. I mean, I can sit here all day and tell you all that they teach us, but they are a mighty and powerful woman of God. And we are honored. We are honored to be able to um, be, under this, be in this ministry, to recognize them and to celebrate them. They pray for us. They do communion over us. The bishop is visiting folks at the hospital. Co-pastors praying for us. They stand together as a team, as our leaders, as our parents, if we need for them to be parents, as our sisters and brothers, if we need for them to be sisters and brothers, as our friend. They stand for us, and we are truly blessed. So with that, all that being said, we're going to celebrate. We're going to, first of all, let's stand up and thank God for the, for the man and woman of God that we have. Let's thank God. Let's celebrate them. of events. So I'm going to get this right. We have a list of events. Starting on, without even looking at my notes, starting on Thursday, we're going to have um, a special service, preaching and teaching by Pastor OJ, Reverend Tory, and Reverend Huggy, all together. I am excited about that. I am excited about that. So that's Thursday. I take it that's going to start at 7 p.m. I'm looking for two. Okay, 7 p.m. on Thursday. Okay, then we're going to move into Friday. On Friday, we're going to have a volleyball tournament. Volleyball, all our volleyball um, champions or players, get ready. There's a sign-up list in the gym that starts immediately after church service to sign up. Um, so get, get, you got a little bit of time to get in shape. Let's, let's go back to the dates. The dates of the anniversary is May 4th to May 6th. May 4th to May 6th. May 4th is that Thursday. That's when we're going to have the, the, the preaching and the teaching by the children. And then we're going to move into Friday, the volleyball tournament. It's going to be Friday. And um, the sign-up list is going to be again in the gym for that starting today. And so you can be a participant or you can be a spectator. We might have some spectators in the audience, and that's fine as well. But, but if you can play volleyball, come on and play volleyball. I ain't played since high school, but... Maybe I'll be a spectator. Okay, let's move on to Friday. No, I did Thursday through Saturday. Saturday, we're going to have a special carnival on Saturday. We're going to have um, games, fun, popcorn, funnel cake, and just a whole lot of fun. And the other special treat on Saturday is that Connor Communication. So this is a special communication company where you can get free cell phone services. I think I'm going to try to sign up for that. Free cell phone services on Saturday. They're going to come to where we are. Um, you need to just bring your identification card, your, your government ID, and your W-2. So we would like for you to join us for line dancing, youth activities, food, and fellowship. Again, April 14th, we will begin at 6 o'clock and end at 8, so we'll start the registration um, at 6 o'clock. Guess what, y'all? Admission is free. Cost you nothing. Free. Yes. Registration is desired, and we will have a registration sheet right out in um, each of the entryways after church today, so please sign up. And masks are required. So because we will also have youth activities, feel free to bring your youth, but register them also so that we can plan um, for food because we will feed you um, a wonderful dinner that you can line dance off um, after you eat. So, all right, so make sure that you register them as well. And we will have door prizes. So you must be present to win the door prizes. We'll do those at the end. So we are excited for our Justice Girls reboot. And ladies, we would love to have you join us. Amen. I know that was a whole lot, wasn't it? Amen, amen. But you know, we've got the movie this Friday, then the Just Us Girls next Friday, and then um, uh, probably kind of like a month from today, we have all those activities for the anniversary. So it is spaced, and I know it feels like a lot at one time, but it's spaced so that we have something to do the whole month, for a whole month. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your indulgence. That's all I have, Bishop. God bless you, God bless you. Again, good to see each and every one. God, thank God to see y'all this Sunday morning. Bless your heart. Yeah, somebody said, good to be here, right? Yeah. Amen. Well, it's good to be here so I can see you. 
This, this, this. I thank God for you. Now, don't forget this Wednesday's power team meeting, right? And then we have our deliverance. Amen? All right. Now, look, next Sunday defines us. Y'all know what I mean by that, don't you? This is what it's all about. Amen. Amen. So, you know, God told me, say it again. He told me, say it again. No better time than to be in God's house than on Resurrection Sunday. It's an invitation. Come on back. We got our God up. Come on back. Physical God and goes our spiritual God up protecting us. So come on. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Talk to you in just a few minutes. I'll come back and talk to you in just a few minutes. Bless you. Amen. Somebody clap your hands right where you see it. Come on, put your hands together if you love God. Hallelujah. Um, all I want to do uh, this morning uh, is acknowledge an individual. Uh, I try to get some pictures of the ceremony, um, uh, but I want to acknowledge this individual this morning. He uh, graduated from uh, Norfolk State University. Uh, he was a standout athlete, a standout wide receiver, and he recently, uh, at the end of February, uh, got inducted uh, to the Norfolk State uh, Football Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, Michael Powell, would you stand? Come on, just stand to your feet. Come on, would you all clap for him? Come on, y'all not clapping good. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations, and I'm a job uh, well done. Uh, I saw on last yesterday evening, uh, we do have an anniversary uh, coming up of a young couple. Uh, I want to acknowledge the young individuals who are getting married and doing things the right way. Uh, 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 the Diggs family. Uh, come on, stand up, uh, uh, Carla, and what's her husband? What's your name? Jamal. That's it. I knew it. Come on, would y'all stand? Come on, would you all clap? How long, how long, how, how long y'all been together? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So they, 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 they've been married for 10, or they've been together for 13 years. Amen. I'm, I'm so excited about it. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, excited for what God is doing for your future. Any other? Oh, yeah. Ed, stand up. Miss Jessica, didn't y'all, where you at? Y'all had an anniversary. Y'all took a picture together. Oh, happy birthday to you. Y'all stand, I thought it was y'all anniversary. Y'all can't keep playing fooling people like that. Happy birthday to you, we love you. Uh, don't forget, uh, next Sunday, Bishop already made the uh, <laughs> announcement, but I wanted you to invite. How many of y'all know two people that's not saved? Come on, y'all, come on. Yeah. How many of y'all know three people that's not saved? Yeah. How many of y'all know... Amen, amen. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning, Trinity. Hey, you know, uh, Sister Valencia gave this really great uh, presentation about blessing the bishop, and co-pastor, and Pastor OJ. But I want to read you a scripture. I want you to put this in your spirit as we go towards May. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and the 12th and 13th verse. And I'll read it. I don't care which version you want to read it in. It says the same thing. So, and now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who worked so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. So it's biblical that we would honor our leaders. Amen? So put that down in your spirit as we march towards May. Amen? All right, I'm up here to take up the offering this morning. I want you right now to, if you're watching me online, take your phone out, text the word Faith Diamond, one word, to 77977. If you do that, 
you will be able to give your tithes offering, a love offering. You can do the same thing in the sanctuary. And if you want to, you can write a check and put it in the boxes by the doors as you walk out. Amen? In any case, I want you to give. It is a blessing for you to give. You will receive the blessing, I guarantee you. Amen? All right, let's stand to our feet and give our confession. I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all wasn't at Wednesday Night Live last Wednesday, you missed a real treat. Go back and watch the, uh, the YouTube. It was a blessing uh, uh, Pastor OJ gave to us last Wednesday. You shouldn't miss Wednesday Night Live. You're missing out on some really good stuff if you are. Amen? Amen. Raise your offering high in the air. Father God, I pray and confess your word over my finances. Today, I have given the whole tithe of my increase and a liberal offering, and I claim the windows of heaven's blessings over my life, over my family, over my finances. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you got joy, stand to your feet and clap them hands. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on. Hey. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Somebody help me say yeah. yeah, I've got true love instead of pain. Come on, tell them, say that's freedom, freedom, there's freedom. freedom Come on, lift that up. I've got joy instead got of mourning. Because you bring me joy. You bring me joy Down deep in my soul Down, Down deep, deep in my soul Down deep, Down deep in Y'all got it soul. now, I need y'all to sing it There's beauty, sing There's beauty in my brokenness Come on, lift that up and say it I got true love Instead of pain There's freedom, freedom, There's freedom, freedom. You bring me joy yeah. Down deep in my soul Down deep, Down deep in my soul Down deep, Down deep in my soul hey. Cause you bring me joy
Come before your presence with thanks. That's all of us, Lord. So I pray in the Lord God that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind and let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus, the anointed one His anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your strength, Lord God. Thank you for your word. And thank you, Lord God, that someone will hear and give their life to you today. Someone will hear and they will rededicate their life. Someone will hear today, Lord God, and be filled with your Holy Spirit, and thank you. As you did with the early church, someone will hear, they give their life to you. Come back and be a part of the church family. Thank you, Father, for the growth of our church family. And thank you, Lord, that you gave us authority, that we can speak right now and cast out every satanic and demonic will come against us, Lord, and try to stop us from hearing him declaring your word. We say, thank you, we know it's done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, make a confession. This is my Bible. My blood covenant in Jesus. This blood covenant is the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. When I hear God's word this morning, Luke 22, verse 15 and verse 20, there Matthew 26, 26 to 28, it teaches, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, break it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he said in verse 27, and he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them and saying, drink ye all of it. Verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. For what? For the remission of sins. Somebody say remission. Amen. Amen. Luke 22, verse 15, and then we will read Chalvin, verse 19 and 20. It teaches us this. And he said unto them with desire, I have desired to do what? Eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Verse 19. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it, gave it unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying this is the cup in the New Testament of my blood which is shed for you. God bless you. Thank you for standing. We want to call it as we use for our subject for our meditation this morning, the therapeutic value of Holy Communion. Subtopic is faith in communal therapy. Now, brothers and sisters, do you know what therapy is? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, has anybody ever been in any type of therapy? Yeah, I see some hands. Sure we have. Therapy is a, the treatment of a disease or disorder by some remedial, rehabilitating, curative process. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, th therapy is, is a curative process. And curative meaning serving to cure or heal the treatment, in, 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 in the treatment. So yes, we go into therapy doing what? Believing that the process of healing is taking place. And listen, the last, from the last few weeks from this teaching, are we aware that there is healing in Holy Communion? Yeah, well, let, let me say it this way. Holy Communion is a therapeutic process for healing. I, I call it communal therapy. And I got that definition from uh, the Holy Spirit the definition in my heart from the Holy Spirit. I, I was looking in the dictionary of the Holy Spirit the other day in, for healing, and, and the reference to me was communal. And I said that it, it, it said that it means through faith in the body and blood of Jesus. Listen, communal therapy means it says no to sin, no to sickness, no to disease, no to poverty, no to lack or any other satanic attack. And listen, one of the main ref scripture references that was given, the diction that the Holy Spirit gave us was Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. You know what it says? It, verse 4 says, Surely he hath bore our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we deem him, him, esteem him stricken and spitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, what did it say? But he was wounded <laughs> by our transgressions, bruised for our nigger with you. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Ah, oh, yes! For the 39 stripes that were laid on the body of Jesus and the blood came streaming down, yes, Holy Communion, communal therapy has that of healing power. But then listen, we must have faith in communal therapy. No, no, no. Holy Communion cannot and should not be taken as just some religious ritual that we do once a month. Brothers and sisters, I believe with all my heart that great and mighty things will come to pass as we put into practice what God said about that of Holy Communion. Well, listen, when we engage and yes, upgrade, yes, raise to a higher standard, this intimate relationship with the Holy Communion, when we partake of the body and the blood of Jesus, I believe that we will see the miraculous take place like never before. Now listen, we have learned that faith is believing what God said and acting on what we believe that God said. Is that right? So acting on what we believe that God says, it does what? It activates our faith. So, well, listen, faith comes by hearing, right? So after hearing the lesson on, it's never too soon to commune, and then also the lesson on, we are what we eat. How many can really say that our faith is stronger now in the power of the body and blood of Jesus? Amen? Well, listen. In using our faith, we remember what Jesus went through for us. His suffering until death for us. Pointing to the resurrection for us. For now listen, if, if, none of this works if he doesn't get up. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, 14, And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, is void. And our faith is also vain. Our faith is also void if he doesn't get up, if he be not risen. So listen, when we come into communion, remembering 
The sacrifice of his body and his blood is our point of contact. We can claim the victory by faith in anything that we need in our lives. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at the blood of Jesus first. And I'm putting the blood, blood first because we got to get rid of that sin first. Isn't that right? Amen? All right, listen. How many believe that the blood that was forced out of the body of Jesus, how many know that that blood eliminated the very source of sickness, which is sin, that came from the devil? Now listen, the blood of Jesus, it doesn't just cover up sin. It completely washes it away. Thank God for the torment of covering up. But it wasn't. So I, I guess that's what the songwriter had in mind when he said, what can wash away my sin? He comes back and said, nothing. But what? The blood of Jesus. Then he says, what can make me whole again? You see, man was whole before sin. So to make us whole again in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, spirit, soul, and body, only the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus can make us whole. So now before this brutal beating, wrestling out our sin. Glory to God. Now listen, I just got a, I just got a, a pop-up that said, we can't just use this and think, well, I can go on sin and it'll be all right. No, no, no. No, when, when we do, we're not going after, but when we do, the blood of Jesus counsels out, remits, washes it away, our sin. See, that's why if we are in sin, we should not forsake taking Holy Communion. We come thinking what? That we, we bring, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine. 29, we bring damnation to ourselves. Listen, that, look, that's what brings damnation to ourselves. Listen, that, look, that's what was once taught in the church, not this church, but some churches even still teach it now. That, that, that if, I, if I sin, don't, I better not, don't you take that communion. If you do, you're going to bring damnation on yourself. Well, listen, if I sin, we just said it. What can wash it away? Only the blood of Jesus, right? Look, look, if I'm dirty, what do I need? I need a bath. Is that right? Amen? Listen, the bath, the bathtub is there. But here, here, here comes my grandma again. I would come in sometime playing uh, dirty and sweaty and I try to sneak by. He said, boy, she said, boy, that tub not going to come to you. Get in there. So I must, if I'm in sin, I must 1 John 1, 9, I must go to the tub of Jesus, confess my sin, and don't you know he's faithful? He just, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He still washes the way our sin forgives us and does what cleanses us from what, what's left out of all, nothing, right? From all unrighteousness. Yes, if I'm seeing sick, I need to take the therapy. So Jesus says, do this, do what? Do our text, Luke twenty two nineteen. 19. Say, it says, and remember, that's so important. That word in this lesson is so important. Remember, and do this, eat my body, do this, drink my blood. And the directions for not the prescription, but the prescripture, remember, was 1 Corinthians 11, 25, 26. Do it often, not just once a month. Thank God for our fellowship together as a family. But don't just do it once a month. The directions say communal therapy is as you need it. Are you listening to me? Now listen, if perhaps someone is still finding it difficult to believe in believing that eating in communion has no spiritual significance for our spirit, soul, and body, our health, and our wholeness, let, let's look back at, at, at something. Let's go back. If we don't believe, if, if, if there's no spiritual significance to, to, to somebody, let's look back at the, at the beginning in Genesis. Listen, Adam ate 
and plunged the whole human race into sin. His sin ushered in sickness, disease, and ultimately death. So God, through his grace, created the plan for man that consisted of eating. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Now remember, we learned that God sent Jesus prophetically, Genesis 3.15, to do what? To destroy Satan and redeem man. Is that right? So Jesus is here now, the last Passover supper. He, say, he says, take, eat. Look at this. Three words that curse man and those same three words that redeem man through Jesus and those three words are took, gave, and eat. Look at Genesis 3, verse 6. Look what it says here. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Look, look, look. It says, first word, she took. She took of the fruit thereof and did what? Second word, she did it. And then third word, she gave it to her husband with her. And what did he do? He did eat. So we have the fall of man with took, gave, and he did eat. So now let's look at Matthew 26 and 26 of our text. We know that the redemption of man came through who? Through Jesus, right? Well, look what Jesus says in verse 26. We said it again. We just read it earlier. And as they were, what? Eating. This was, again, his last passage of the top of Jesus. He says, as they were, what? Eating. Here's the first word. Jesus took bread. He blessed it. Break it. Here's the second word. Gave. Gave to man, his disciples, and said, take. Third word. Eat. This is my body. Do you see that? So the fall came by take, give, eat. And he comes, Jesus comes, and look, look, look. The source of redemption through Jesus, it comes there by take, give, and eat. Do you see that? So God sent Jesus, our Redeemer, to tell us take, eat, eat his body, take, drink his blood, take, bring health and wholeness to us, all of God's people. Glory to God. Now, so you need to go and remind somebody, say, listen, say, say, say now you see, go and tell them, say, now you see how important eating and communion meal is? Tell somebody, the communion meal is the meal that heals. Now, come on, give God some praise for that right there. Come on, give him praise right there. That's right. So, look. We must have faith in what God says in his word, faith in communal therapy. Listen, the therapy from this meal of communion will literally turn our life around. Is anybody beginning to see now why I'm so hung up in this communion message? I'm hung up on this therapy of this meal because, because before Jesus was hung up, he tells us how to fix our hang-ups. For if we're hung up in fear, hung up in anxiety, hung up in worry, hung up in oppression, hung up in depression, hung up in weakness, hung up in sickness, or whatever our hang-up is, Jesus said before, look, before Jesus was hung up, he recommended the therapy that we hang out around the communion table. That's why I'm so hung up on this communion message. Is anybody here hung up with me? Glory to God. Now listen, you recall, uh, let me say again, this is a key word, bring to our remembrance. I said that the reason that I'm putting so much emphasis on this therapy of Holy Communion, reason being so we can have faith in all of what Jesus did for us. So listen, we magnified the blood, right? For the forgiveness of sin and for new life. 
Leviticus 17, 11, which says what? For the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. Well, look, we know that bread is associated with the body of Jesus in healing. Is that right? Well, come on, let's close with this, this, this text in Matthew 15. See, yeah, faith comes by hearing, right? Okay, so Matthew 15, verses 22 through 28, we see Jesus referring to bread and faith, and bread has been our focus in communion for the body of Jesus. Is that right? For healing, right? Okay, okay. So we want to use this reference from bread here that's in Matthew 15, but to see what happens in healing from Jesus when this bread mentioned is centered around faith. Now this is not communion served, but a service of this element of communion of bread. Do you see the one where we're going? Listen, look, when it produces from Jesus through our faith. It's familiar. I've taught on this before, but look at what it says to strengthen our faith. From hearing what Jesus does, speaking of bread, this bread, and faith. Watch this. Now, we, 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 look, look, we got our sins squared away with the blood, right? And, and, and we know that the, the scripture teaches us that Jesus does what? He forgives and heals. Is that right? Okay, well, let's look at this. Matthew 15, verses 22 through 28, Amplified Version. Listen, I'm going to slip in some message Bible verse just to give it a little spice. Okay? All right, look. Matthew 15, verses 22, it teaches here, and behold, a woman who was a Canaanite from the, that district, she came out and with a loud, troublesomely urgent cry, begged, have mercy on me, O oh Lord, son of David. My daughter is miserably, distressingly, cruelly <laughs> possessed by a demon. Now remember, Acts 10, 38 said that Jesus went about doing good and what? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And that word all is important in this lesson. Look, verse 23. Look what it says here. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, send her away. She cried out to us. Look, look, look. The message Bible, verse 23, says this. Jesus ignored her. So the disciples came and complained, Jesus, now she bothering us. Would you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. The message Bible says, Jesus refused telling them, look, fellas. I just threw that in. But the message Bible said, look. I got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. But now, brothers and sisters, this mother wanted help for her daughter. And, and so can I make a recommendation right here? Pause right and make a recommendation right here. Brothers and sisters, like with this mother, if we, look, if we need help for our children in whatever they're into or going through, Take this situation to Jesus in prayer with communion as our point of contact. Do you receive that this morning? Yeah. Amen. God knows it'll work for it. Amplified verse said, verse 25. So she came to Jesus kneeling and was saying, she kneeled, said, and the Bible said, she worshiped Jesus. Listen, this mother turned her weary. Her worry into worship. <sighs> Go and tell somebody, say, don't worry about the situation. Worship the Lord. Go into the Lord's presence and humble ourselves. Get lift up both our hands. Fall on our knees. Worship the Lord. Don't worry. Worship. Glory to God. So verse 25 says, she kneeling 
And not what she just kneeled. It said, it said she started praying and she kept on praying, Lord, 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 help me, Lord. Anybody ever pray like that? Help me, Lord. Well, how many know it's all right? You're a covenant child. You can look to the hills for coming your help. Our help comes from who? Come from the, come on, say the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Psalm 34, 70 is in the righteous cry. The Lord does what he is. What did he do after here? He answers, deliver us from all of our trouble. Glory to God. Okay, okay, okay. So, so verse 26, and 5, Bible says, and so she, so, so, so she, she, Jesus uh, answered, and verse 26 says, and he answered, he did not write. Talking to the woman, it, it ain't right. It's not proper. Becoming a fair, look what Jesus said, to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. So here's the word that the element from communion that was brought here, given to us for this lesson. Do you know what the bread here refers to? It refers to the blessing for all of God's children. Do any, any God's children in here this morning? Anybody? Yeah. 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 From my research, it refers to the benefits that the Messiah Jesus was to bring to the house of Israel. But now look, look what the bread benefit included. It included salvation for the body, soul, and spirit. Salvation from sin, sickness, demons, satanic power. From this bread benefit, these were the family rights, legal rights, promise rights, human rights, divine rights, redemptive rights, covenant rights for all of God's children. Again, have I got any God's children in this house? Well, look, verse 26, we stop there when it says, take the children's bread. But the verse goes on to say, speaking of the bread, it said, it said, Jesus, Jesus said, he said, it, it, it's not right, it's not becoming, it's not fair, it's not, not proper uh, to, to take the children's bread, and that is to take covenant rights bread, throw it to little dogs. Listen. To the Jews or Israelites, if you were not a Jew, you referred to, if the Greek word is koreana, uh, meaning little dog or puppy. The term was not offensive at that time. It merely expressed that Gentiles were outside of the covenant rights of Israel. But look, 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 verse 27. She looked, the woman was called a dog. But listen, this woman did not get offended. She didn't yodel her neck. She didn't pop her lips. She didn't roll her eyes. She didn't take her earrings off. But she humbled herself. She said, yes. She said, who? She said, yes, Lord. Yet, this woman acknowledged that her position as an undeserving and without legal covenant rights to the children bread, yet, somebody say, yet, yet she used the, watch this, she used the Lord's own words concerning dogs as, as grounds to plead her case for healing. God told us to bring us into, re, bring him into remembrance of his word. Isaiah 43 verse 26 says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare thou what thou may just be justified. Take God what he said. Take his word to him. Say, Lord, I believe what you said, Lord. So Jesus, and five virgin says, verse 27, she said, yes, Lord, yet yeah, even the little pups Wimps eat the crumbs that fall from their master's, their master's table. So, this woman humbled herself and agreed with Jesus of the description of calling her a dog. Taking the place of an unworthy Gentile, she cast herself, look, on the mercy, on the love, and the grace of Jesus. She said, in effect, you're right, Lord. True that, Lord. I'm only a little dog. I'm the table. 
But she said, Lord, I noticed that the crumbs that fall from the table on the floor, won't you let me just have some crumbs? This woman is saying, no, I, I'm not worthy that I should, be, should, should, should hear, get healing for my daughter. But I beseech you, do it for one of your undeserving creatures. And listen, verse 28, if I said something about Ebonix, I said this. Verse 28, Jesus said, Lord, girl. No, he doesn't say that. But the Amplified verse says, Jesus answered, oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was cured, healed from that very moment. But I just got to let y'all got to see what the, what the message Bible said, said the same thing. Verse 28, message Bible said, he said, Jesus gave in and he said, Oh, woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. And right then, her daughter became well. Are right, you listening to me? Listen, 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 listen. listen. Well, I said, listen, needing deliverance and healing are one and the same because sickness and demon possession are due to satanic oppression. Remember, Acts 10, 38 said, Jesus healed all the what? The oppressed of the devil. So Jesus seeing healing as the children's bread Look, this woman had a discernment of faith that Jesus could heal her daughter. So she put, watch this, she put her faith, point of contact, into some breadcrumbs. Faith. Put God's word into practice. And listen, here's my last closing right here. I'm a Baptist boy, so I already had two, but here's my last close. We hear the word, but we re must, must remember. Somebody said one more time, remember. You remember Jesus, look, in, in James 1.22 teaches that be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So that's Jesus, so he says here in our text, Luke 22.19 of our text, this do in what? Remembrance of me. Okay, in remembrance. Okay, well, there's a sister in this church who gave a testimony that she heard the word preached and taught by me, her bishop, she said her bishop, she gave testimony name. She said she believed what she, the word of God said, but she said she, she didn't act on it until she was reminded. Go tell somebody, say, say, tell somebody, say, I'm reminding you Jesus said, this do, in remembrance of me. Now, I, I don't usually call names. But I, 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 I guess I've been given permission, I have, to use this name. Uh, 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 listen, Sister Deaconess Betty Galls was suffering in pain. And she, she was just dragging along, hurt to stand up. Hurt to lay down. Medical therapy did not help the sciatic nerve damage that she experienced. Long story short. Well, one day, Deaconess Evelyn Wynn said to her, Sister Betty, you remember Bishop preaching on about communal therapy? Taking Holy Communion for healing. <laughs> Forgive me, Sister Wynn. <laughs> Sister Gosh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. I remember that. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. She said, eh, eh, eh. That's a hug. Eh. <laughs> he said, yes. She said, hey, come on, leave me Holy Communion like Bishop taught so for my healing. He said, I can do that. <laughs> so he prayed the prayer of faith through communion. Sister Gall was in pain every day, all night, for two months, but after communal therapy. They took Holy Communion 
often. For eight days trusting God for healing. Remember, as often as you need it, Sister Deacon is bad at God's. Eight is the number of new beginnings. She got her new beginning of healing and wholeness from communal therapy. It's been three years now. And for Sister Giles, no more dragging along. No more hard to stand up. No more hard to lay down. No more suffering. No more pain. But healed and made whole through what? Communal therapy. Somebody give God praise in the house. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. For remember what Jesus did and remember to do what he said uh, he will uh, do what he said he'd do uh, in healing us whole making us whole uh, spirit soul and body and uh, I know that we've heard go through therapy you find yourself crying and ain't nothing sad in taking uh, communal therapy you'll be dancing and ain't no music did you hear me in communal therapy you take off running and ain't nobody after you you jump over stuff that ain't there I call it communal therapy the ingredients are the body and blood of Jesus taking it often as you need it yes have faith in it but when you have faith in communal therapy it'll set you free when you have faith in communal therapy it'll give you the victory when you have faith in communal therapy you'll get your breakthrough when you have faith in communal therapy God will deliver you yes well if you have faith right now somebody communal therapy you ought to be laughing if you have faith in communal therapy somebody ought to be dancing if you have faith in communal therapy run jump clap scream shout give god praise for communal therapy god's holy communion it'll bless you it'll heal you it'll bring deliverance Yes, it will. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yes. Woo. Come on, Holy communion. Hey. It'll bless you. It'll heal you. It'll lift you. Give it up. It'll lift you up. Turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. Give it praise. Give it praise. Give it praise. Hey! Hey! Ow! Yes. 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 Remember, remember, take it all, remember, this do, remember, I'm going through something, I'm going through something, eh? Lord I sure wish First Sunday was here. You going through something, don't, some, don't wait on first Sunday. As often as you need it. It works, church. But what happens has to happen. We have to, we gotta work it. You received it this morning. Come on, give God praise one more time. God bless your heart. The therapeutic value of Holy Communion, communal therapy, we have faith in it, it works for us. Somebody here this morning, here or someone listening, that may not be here, but you heard the word, 
And the only way we can celebrate on next Sunday is to make sure we have Jesus in our hearts right now. The Bible said, what will we do? Confess with our mouth. This is how we become saved. Believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. What happened? Just like that, you're saved. And that's the invitation right now. Come on, give your life to the Lord today. You, 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 can't, you can't come to that table and take communion unless we come to him and say, Lord, save me. It's for those that have been delivered. Salvation, come on right now. Don't miss it today. Somebody here right now needs to come. Will y'all, y'all do me a favor? If, 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 if you can, will, will everybody stand right where you are? If, if you can. I understand if you can't. Just, 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 just give them that weight. Y'all already stood up, so the only thing you know you got to do now is move left or right. Okay? Thank you so much for your obedience. This is so important that we receive this, especially now. Have y'all, y'all looked at the television news lately? To see all of this stuff that's happening? If, if, if shooting and killing and robbing and wasn't enough, here come the tornadoes and stuff, tearing up places. Threatened by war on this country. God is telling us He's coming back. He's giving us signs. So he wants us to come to him now. And when we come to him now, you know what happens? He puts a head of protection around you. He places you in the secret place. Psalm 91, a secret place of the Most High. About him, the shadow of Almighty. Angels charge to keep you in all your ways. Come on, step forward. Let me pray with you in salvation. That's the invitation. That's number one. Got to make sure we've confessed it to the Lord. Lord, forgive me for my sin. I believe what you said about your son Jesus. I I, I ask him to make me Lord of my life right now. Just like that, you belong. Now you have what? As I mentioned, now you have covenant rights. Everything God said in the word, you know what belongs to you? Belongs to, it belongs to you. Everything. Come on. Salvation. As you're making your way to salvation to come, let me pray with you. The second invitation is rededicate your life. That's right. Come back to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, I I was saying one time when I, I said, you know, I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. No, I sinned. I've fallen short. I acknowledge what it was. And the Lord wasn't mad with me. Can't talk about you, but I can talk about me. Amen? Somebody know what I'm talking about, though, right? And I came back, rededicated my life. Gave my life to the Lord. Back to the Lord. He always had his hand on me, but I, I, I strayed away. Somebody right now. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel. We, we, most, most of us in here have been there. Can I get a witness? Come back. Rededicate your life this morning to the Lord. Come on. Come on. Do it now. Do it now. I just got to hear that old song pop in my my, my mind. This, This could be the last time. Remember the old song? I don't know. Come on. Be too late to pray a prayer. Be too late to sing a song. But God said, now nah, the day. Rededicate your life. Come on back to the Lord. Not trying to scare you, just trying to help you. Have a joyful life, down, abundant life, a more abundant life right here on this earth. Come on. Rededicate your life. Invitation that we want to talk about now. Salvation is first. Rededication being filled with God's Holy Spirit. How many, how many, now I'm just, I'm just throwing this out because I know that every hand will go up if we're honest. You just couldn't, didn't know which way to go. You need a direction. 
you need a direction. God is saying now, be filled with my, my precious Holy Spirit. I guide you, I direct you, I comfort you, I keep you, I'll be with you always. Somebody right now needs to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. And there's a benefit from it and a, and a weapon, I say, from it also. He gives us a praise, prayer, and worship language called tongues that we're not ashamed of. But it'll bless us in every way. It'll, it's, that, it's that prayer, praise, and worship that the Satan he scratches his head. What in the world are they talking about? But God knows it's from us to God. Come on. I promise you, from my own experience, God will bless you. He'll, he'll make that way for you. Be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Last invitation. I said this probably last Sunday, the Sunday before last. We talk about in Acts 2, there were 3,000 that were saved, 3,000 that came back, that came to be a part of the church. But then over in Acts 4, it said 5,000 came. So 3,000 and 4,000 and 5,000, how much? 8,000, right? That's what? Eight is what? There we go. We got some new beginning folks right here. Come on, be a part of this church family. Come on, experience what it is. We talk, because if I say, the faith diamond experience. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Come on, is there another? Is there another? Let me run back through it again. And this time... You got a job. You know what your job is, right? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, salvation. I say, I've been assigned to walk with you. Come on. Let me walk with you. You don't have to walk by yourself. Come on. To rededicate your life. It's my assignment. I've been appointed to walk with you. Go and tell them, I've been appointed to walk with you. Help me carry out my assignment. I walk with you. To be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Come on. I walk with you. Be a part of this church family. Whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Come on, give God praise right there. Father, pray with me, y'all. Father, we thank you for this dear brother. Huh? Let me say this real quick. I said grape juice because I passed the three churches, right? One, two, three, take your pick. After morning worship one Sunday, with only the first Sunday, I told I had some of my officers, my deacon, to go with me to commune. We had about five houses to commune. We called back then sick and shut in. We went to commune. Now, I just administered the communion, and the, but the brothers, they took communion with the people that were, we were communing with. And I found about, about the third, t third house we went to, the brothers were <laughs> wrong with y'all? See, during that time, we had real wine. Man of shit, whatever it was. Right after I saw it, I said, no more. I shut it down. Get you some grape juice. Nothing intoxicating. Amen. Just some bread. And do it often. God knows it'll work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Say yes. There we go. May God bless you and keep you. His faith to shine upon you, his countenance upon you. 
and give you peace. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit keep us now henceforth. And if I my way, all God's children say it, amen. amen. God bless you. Love y'all. Don't forget Friday, Wednesday night. Deliverance. Power team. Bless you. Love y'all. Fire on my own.